V model works differently in view three. It's a little bit more complex than in view two, but the added flexibility more than makes up for it. Before we go on, I wanted to let you know that I am available for helping your company, whether that's coaching, consulting, fixed bid projects. I'll share more at the end of the video. Now back to vModel. This is what we're going to be learning in this video. We're going to go over the basics of vModel, transforming a simple app into using vModel. Then we're going to be showing the defaults if you don't include one of the new options that's available in view three. Then we'll show how to create multiple V models in one component. Here's our very simple example app for today. We have a number of tacos and we click this button to add to the tacos. And you'll see in our code that we have the adding happening in the taco store component but we're also referencing the updated number of tacos outside that component. And right now we have it, so we're not using V model. We're gonna convert this to V model in a second. Let's take a quick look at our taco store component. We see that we are taking in the prop of tacos, displaying it here, and then emitting the update tacos event with one more taco than it got. So, We'll be sending back up that new value and it'll be set right here. Now let's go ahead and implement this using vModel. So what it's gonna look like when using the component is this. So we don't need to define the event explicitly and we don't need to define the value explicitly. It's just vModel and then we specify that it's for tacos. And what this is the equivalent to is this, that stays the same, but then this is update colon tacos, and then this. And so what we'll have to change in taco store is this, and that's it. Then we can have our nice, easy V model right here. If we test it, we can see that it's still working properly. This is a bit more verbose than in view two. And so you may want the old syntax back like this. Good news, you can do it. What you're gonna have to do is change in here. So now instead of tacos, this needs to be model value. And this event needs to be update model value. We can go check on our app and see that it's still working. So, so far we've shown how view three's V model works, but you may not be clear yet on why we'd prefer it over view two's version of V model. There are a couple reasons. So the first is that you may want to use value or the input event. And if you're using V model in view two, there was an extra option you had to do to free these back up. And you also had to use that extra option if you wanted your prop to be something like tacos instead of value. And so, this common use case of wanting to use the value prop or the input event elsewhere is already taken care of for you. The second is that if you want to take advantage of V models uses for more than one property, now it's much easier. So let's say that we want to use V model for burritos as well. So let's go ahead and add these real quick. And now if we wanna use this in taco store, what we need to go down here and do is we'll add the burritos prop.
and then we will use it here. And what we'll be doing is we can have burritos just like this, and we'll have update burritos. And so unless you're using the default model value, then the prop will be what's after V model, and then the event will be update, and then what's after V model, burritos in this case. And we can go ahead and finish this out, replicating what we had for tacos with burritos, and we'll show it working. So there we have it. We have our V model, our default, and our usage, which contains the desired name. And we've seen that we can expand this beyond just one usage of V model. And we can have as many as you want. Although, of course, all the usual rules about component design apply. You don't want a dozen of these. And here we can see that we have the name here instead of value. And then instead of input, we have update, then colon, and then the name. And if we don't give a name for the V model, it will default to model value. And of course, you can only do that once per component. You can't have this. Thank you everyone for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below with what you want to see next. And if your company needs any help with Vue, then shoot me an email. I've done weekly coaching, I've done fixed bid projects, and of course I've done a lot of hourly work. We want to see what would best benefit your company and move you forward. So if that's you, go ahead and shoot me an email. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.